What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's finally time to get the interior of the caddy looking a lot prettier. It's very noisy in the back, it's cold, it's damp, it's not very nice. I do plan to maybe use it on the odd overnighter, maybe a fishing trip. So uh, we want to make it a bit nicer. Insulation, sound deadening, vapour barrier, carpet, boarding, all the good stuff. Before we get into it, I'm going to show you what materials we're going to be using and uh, yeah, how we go about it. Let's have a butcher's. We've got a combination of things. We've got some dodo insulation. We've got some dodo sound deadening. Dead as a dodo, and yes, I can confirm that. They went extinct in 1690. Factually correct there. I did Google it first. Then we've got some four or five mil foam padding, sticky back, foil one side, acts as a vapor barrier. Then we've got some bubble wrap type stuff, um, foily. I use it as a vapour barrier. We've also got some everyday household carpet insulation. A few bits there. We're going to use all these in combination to hopefully have a nice, quiet, comfy, vapour barriered van. I have already spent a couple of days cutting things up. Makes it nice and easy when you go to install. Pre-cut all the sound matting, pre-cut all the insulation. They are the old boards that were in the van. I am going to cut new ones because these are slightly bent, a few chips in them. It was used as a builder's van. We want to use new boards but i did spend a couple of days actually making those boards fit nice so then i can just trace around them and cut fresh ones i will put a link to all the stuff we've used in the description of this video in total with the boards all the insulation i probably spent 300 quid it costs around seven eight hundred quid to get your van relined but that's just with the carpet lining none of this stuff so if you do it yourself you can do a much better job for a lot less money let's have a look in the van and see what we're starting on Right, we've moved into the van, and you can see, we've already seen, it's a bare panel van. It did have wood boarding in it. It might have made it a bit quieter, but uh, it was no good. Now, there is three methods you could do this. There's probably more, but we're going to stick to three. And the first one is just carpet lining everything. Literally, cut two metres by two metres, spray glue the hell out of it, and then carefully push all the carpet into all the creases, all the corners, and don't get me wrong, if we look at this picture, it does look nice. Very nice. I like all the uh, the detailing around the windows, around the wheel arch. It does look very good, but there's no insulation there. There's no vapor barrier. There's no noise barrier. And that's good if it's just a work van and you just want to make the work van a little bit prettier on the inside. But if you do plan to use it as a camper or something like that, or maybe an overnighter, or you just want to make it quieter, so the driving experience is a bit nicer. Second method is to board it completely and you'd go off the top of the wheel arch and you'd go right to the roof, uh, cutting the panel all the way down, all the way round, and it will basically be just a box. Now, it is all right, don't get me wrong, but in a small van, you're losing a lot of space. And when I had my ruler, which I don't have to hand, from the panel to where the wood board would sit is about 120 mil of wasted space now don't get me wrong you're probably never going to fill the van up to ever need that extra 120 mil but it is a bit nicer aesthetically more pleasing to the eye if you've got a small van and you've made the most of the inside so the full paneling which was what this had is not the route we're going to go down i want it to be a bit spacious i also don't want to just carpet it to maximize the space because i want it to be a bit comfier third option is to cut boarding as small as possible and that gives it a nice flat surface and then you can put insulation a vapor barrier all the good stuff behind it i have seen a couple of builds where they just panel it out inside they'll carpet everywhere panel it out inside put some carpeted panels in there and it does look good but i want it to be really quiet these pillars there's one two three pillars i want to cover them that way we can put a bit more insulation a bit more vapor barrier make it a bit quieter and uh, yeah just a little bit more nicer i'm going to come down to this second pillar rather than coming all the way out here meeting the roof i'm going to come 60 mil in so yes we're going to lose 55 60 mil of space it will look a lot bigger than just paneling straight down now the first process what i like to do is fill all these holes up and it's a bit of a vapor barrier a bit of a wind trap if you ever drive down the road and you can hear wind whistling noises they're probably coming from all these little holes so i get an aluminium tape 
I've already done a couple here. It's just a metal tape. You can get it from any builder's yard and I stick it over all the holes and that way when you do carpet stuff, the carpet doesn't just fall right in and you can see little ringlets everywhere. We're going to get all the holes covered up and now on a caddy, especially if you're watching this for the caddy, up here we've got two lumps of metal sticking out, not sure what they're for, but we want to tap them in ever so slightly with a hammer because we want it to be as flat as possible. It's probably the same on all sorts of vans, Vivaros, Transits, T5s, there's probably something protruding. I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes and tap all these screw holes down a little bit because they are coming out. I'm going to tap that in with a hammer. I'm going to cover all these holes up with an aluminium tape and then we can look at the sound deadening. Let's get, uh, let's get these holes covered up. I won't time lapse this because we're just covering holes up. Uh, yeah, let's get there. 20 minutes later, we've got all the holes covered. I tapped down, as mentioned, these and then with the foil tape, I've pulled it tight. I've mm, just pushed it in there anyway. I've stuck it on the ends, I've pulled it tight and I haven't pressed it in so that acts as a bit of a, a straightener. We want a nice flat panel to stick the next bit on. I have left a couple of little pinholes from the old uh, board in. We're going to stick something over that in a minute and I will explain. Now, one thing I do want to point out, there's the foil tape. It's a mammoth tape. When doing stuff like this, I've got good scissors. Got them off eBay, super cut. And uh, they're about eight, nine quid. When doing stuff like this, it pays to have a good pair of scissors. When you're cutting stuff, you want a nice straight edge. Makes the job a lot nicer, makes it a lot prettier. And have a look at this. As I'm cutting through this bubble wrap uh, vapor barrier, you can see I can just slide the scissors along. Makes a super nice cut. Looks a lot nicer at the end. Anyway, back to the dodo matting and the soundproofing. There's two types I use. Again, it's the 5mm foam-based sticky back foil and you've got the really heavy duty dodo sound matting this stuff is really good this is normally what you find random patches in panels there's none in the caddy there was one small one on the sliding door it's what they use when they're manufacturing vehicles and uh, yeah it's really good it's a thick tarry stuff and this has got a foil layer over the top now it's quite heavy i ordered 10 sheets of this and the box is really heavy I have seen jobs online and people have stuck this everywhere. They must have used 100 sheets. Now that is a lot of weight. If you buy some of this, you're going to be surprised how heavy 10 sheets is. I wouldn't want to use 100 sheets in here because, uh, yeah, the van would be on the deck empty. Um, so, yeah, um, I only use this in the really noisy areas. And the main one is these wheel tubs. The shape of them, the wheels are under there. Load of road noise. They act as a speaker. A lot of noise comes through them. I do plan to carpet these after, but I want to get some of the dodo matting on there. It's quite hard to get it to go around corners. Now, you'll find it will bend nicely on the flats, obviously, and then it's not very malleable because of the foil stuff. I wonder if you used this stuff without the foil on, it might bend into the areas a bit easier. But we've got the foil stuff, we're going to make it happen. I use strips, thinner strips. On a nice flat area, you'd use a full panel, very nice, very easy. When it comes to corners, you'll stick that on there, you'll stick that down there, you'll then end up with a big cleat sticking out either side. What I do, I get a blade, a fresh blade, like my fresh scissors, I cut through the end of it, I stick one surface down, and then I overlap the other surface. The carpet is very forgiving, but you want to make it as good as possible, as everything it's all in the preparation, so it's quite a time consuming job. That is all round. It's going to take a while to get that nice. Um, foam padding, nice and easy. This is a random off cut that I cut wrong. We've got multiple ones there. And basically, this is the other sound matting I do. Insulation and as I say, vapour barrier. And we're going to stick them in there. Nice and easy. Uh, this I am going to carpet. That's having a board along it, but this I'm going to carpet. So I'm going to cut a strip that fits in there nicely. Not only is that gonna cover up these small screw holes, that is then gonna flatten off our punted in area with the hammer uh, and just make that a lot nicer to carpet. You can carpet over this and you can't see the texture. Let's, uh, there's a few areas to do. I wanna do all in here. I have pre-cut these, they're not stuck down. We're gonna get all the sound matting and the dodo matting installed and then we can see what's next. We've got a couple of layers of underlay. We're time-lapse this, you can see how it's done. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get on to the soundproofing.
all the sound deadening is done on that side and happy days because it is not nice. The foam stuff goes on really nice. I did cut it a little bit bigger than the uh, opening and I just slightly poked it behind that recess. Seals it up. Anyway, this stuff, dodo matting, uh, it's good stuff. It literally, all your sounds and noises and vibrations will literally be dead as a dodo. The second reason, which I didn't mention in the first clip, was yes, it's heavy, and also, to remove it, it is very hard work. If you do it in the summer, you try peeling that off, you're going to end up with a black, gooey mess, and it goes everywhere. If you do it in the winter, you might get lucky and get some of it off. But if you ever have to remove the black, tarry, sticky stuff, it is not easy. This stuff, you can slowly peel it off. If we ever had any damage, thinking ahead, future-proofing, if we ever have any damage, someone crashes into us, we need to get to the panel, this will peel off. That stuff won't peel off. That's why I use it on here and not everywhere. And let's face it, if you've got damage on your wheel tub, your van's probably knackered and you should get a new one anyway. Yeah, uh, done. Sealed all the gaps up. We've run some foam along there, the, uh, the foamy backed stuff. All the holes that were there are now completely smoothed off. It's all flat, I can't feel them. Very, very, very nice. That is process two with sound deadened. Now I'm gonna move on to sticking the insulation in and that is the carpet, the household carpet underlay. I am going to stick a piece over there and then I'm going to stick another piece on top of that and the reason is I want the foam in to be slightly pressed by the, the boarding that goes in. I don't want it to be bulging the wood out but I do want it to slightly press on it and we have a bigger gap at the bottom than we do at the top so I've got a second layer going along the bottom. Once we've done the yellow carpet underlay and I am going to lightly spray glue it not going to put loads on because again if we ever have to get to it I don't just want to obliterate it I want it to come off relatively easily so a little bit of spray glue hold it all in place that way it won't ever start falling off and like all falling down and all ending up down there at the bottom uh, yeah so let's get on with the underlay it's getting dark uh, no one likes dark footage it gets a bit grainy on camera so yeah I'm going to stick a few of these yellow bits on and then we'll probably move on to tomorrow and stick the wall insulation. But a 12 hour period for me is like a click of the thumb for you guys. Uh, yeah, let's get on with putting you some of the underlay in. Because I am sick of that tarry stuff. Horrible job. Takes a long, it's fiddly. It is the following day, but I got a bit more than expected done last night. We got all the 5mm soundproofing in, we got all the Dodo insulation in, and yeah, very nice. It is spray glued lightly, um, so as I say, future proof, if I ever need to get it off, it will come off. And then I did get two layers in the lower rear quarter. I could probably get two layers in that, but I believe one will be alright. And uh, yeah, very happy. Looks very warm and snug. I did also manage to get two layers of carpet underlay in the roof. I did put the 5mm padding under there first. Uh, yeah, very nice. The 5mm sticky back stuff, it does stick well. And as I say, you could get it off if really need to. And if I tap the roof, how solid does that sound? I did spray glue two layers both sides got it up there spent a bit of time doing it very happy with the roof happy with the progress so far looks a lot warmer in there now we need to move on to the vapor barrier it's a three mil bubble wrap it is another form of insulation any air gaps obviously stop heat from inside outside condensation it's very small but i use this as the vapor barrier as well and i'm going to stick it up all over that and that is going to stop any moisture from getting to our panels now what is the point in vapor barrier well 
if you've ever had a van, you've gone into it the next morning, all the inside of the metal, it's all covered in moisture, condensation, dripping, not very nice. And that is from you drying any tools you've put in the back or anything that's got wet, then slowly dries the next day and then it all sticks to the panel. If we don't seal this with a vapour barrier, all the moisture will soak into that, will still get to the panel, that'll end up going mouldy, it'll probably rust your panel out. So we need to seal all this up with the vapour barrier, that will stop it from rotting out. We're going to do the same on the roof, we're going to do the same on the quarter. Let's, uh, let's get the big stand out, let's get into it and let's get the vapour barrier up. I have already blue peated this and cut out my vapour barrier ready to go. I'm going to spray glue it round the edges. Nice bit of spray glue all the way round, that will seal it. You could run around it with the foil tape after. I don't like sticking too much of this foil tape on because a bit like the dodo matting, it's hard to come off. If I tried to peel that tape off now, it'd make a mess. But let's see how we get on. Vapor barrier, all done. I have used tape in a few strategic areas. Uh, yeah, very nice, very bright in there. Also done the roof, done the roof in two sections, done a back section, front section, taped it along the middle. Very nice, very nice. Uh, yeah, happy with all the progress. Now on to carpet. We got a carpet over the patchwork quilt, sound deadening. I'm sure it's gonna be all right. A quick run through on how I'm going to do this. I only need carpet in a few areas. I need carpet round the wheel tub, up the last post, and then I need some along there and down there. So basically, it's gonna be a border of carpet, and then we're gonna put a board that's carpeted over that. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna do it in pieces, because obviously, let me zoom out a bit. Obviously, to do it real nice, you just have one massive bit of carpet over the whole lot but that is a massive waste of carpet in the middle. So I'm gonna do a strip over the tub and up that last post. So I'll cut an L section and I'll be able to get that in one. Then we're gonna have a strip along the top and then a strip along the front edge. Um, so I'm gonna do it in four pieces. When joining carpet, as long as you've got a clean cut with a fresh pair of scissors or a fresh blade, you can butt the two bits of carpet together and you, you can't tell. Once you've brushed over the, the seam, you literally can't tell. So I'm gonna do this piece first because it's, we wanna get that bit done nicely. That will be nice and easy along the top. Same with the front and the bottom. Give you a quick demo on one side and then we'll time lapse the rest. There's the carpet we need, the sizes. I've overhung it by a few inches either way. It's better to have too much than not enough. So that bit goes over the wheel tub and that bit comes up the post. I've just roughly laid it out. As I say, I've measured a few inches more than what I need, because it's better to have too much than not enough. I'm gonna cut this out, and then I'm gonna flip it over. Make sure you flip it over, otherwise you'll have two for the same side, and then trace round it on this side. And that'd be enough for both rear tubs and both sides. Let's, uh, let's cut it out. I've spray glued everywhere where the carpet's gonna go. If you remember, when I offered my boards up, my boards are gonna sit on this blue band. I want the carpet to sit a little bit further so then we've got no straight wood touching any metal panels. The last thing you wanna do is drive up the road near it squeaking. So I want the carpet to be under the board. We want the carpet to be out. We want it to slightly overhang everywhere around. I have put a little bit of tape along me rubber because we don't want spray glue. You can end up making a mess with spray glue, but we've done all right. I have already pre-spray glued the back of the carpet. We've done that, it's had 10 minutes to go off. Big tip is letting spray glue go off. Don't try spray gluing it, then putting it straight up because it just comes unstuck. It's called contact adhesive for a reason. It sticks once, 
So if you put it up and it don't stick, it's more than likely the solvents haven't evaporated out of the glue, then it won't stick. First of all, I'm going to offer the carpet up and stick it along this bottom edge and make sure we've got enough overhang on the outside, the bottom, lightly stick it along this flat face, then stick it along this flat face and then we're going to work around. I am going to go straight in for the deepest part, pulling it in, it's a four way stretch carpet so it stretches quite a lot. So you want to pull it into the deepest areas part first and then uh, work your way round. This shouldn't take too long so a full blown demonstration. And if you can see fluffy material on the wheel arch, that means that I messed up the first time and this is second run. But if there's no fluff on it, this is first run. I've done it a few times, practice makes perfect with anything really. So we've got enough overhang there. Just going to lightly stick that on. And I am going to pull it to stretch it out a little bit on the straights. Not a lot, just a little bit. You don't want it to be hanging tight, but you do want it to be slightly taut. Run that along that bottom edge, make sure there's none over under hanging, shall we? And hopefully my measurements are right. I'm just going to work it up, and I'm lightly pulling it can't see because that's in the way I do apologize I'm just lightly pulling it that just pulls any creases out because when you buy this carpet it does come folded up it's not on a roll it's folded up so I'm just slightly pulling it tight not too tight and you can lightly if you haven't fully stuck it on mess everywhere I should have tied it up you can lightly pull it off again just a little bit slowly now I'm going to pull this up, I'm going to aim to have a join along this line. So I'm going to lightly pull that, I'm not going mad with pulling it. That's on there, we can trim that after. There's a nice little lip in the rubber for the carpet to sit in and finish it off nicely. Now this is where it gets a little bit trickier. And we've got a lot of overhang, but it's fine. I am going to start stretching it in, just lightly pushing it. Because there's so much overhang, not up the top here on the highest point, down in that corner, I am going to cut some out, which will make my life a little bit easier, but take your time. Spray glue is fine for hours and hours after. So it isn't like you've got a rush like some glues. I want to keep cutting it as close as possible without going too far. So that's why I say take your time. I'm going to stretch it a little bit. And as I'm going around the curve, I'm stretching it again, I'm pulling it. Not too much, but just enough so it four way stretches around everything. Oh, well, yeah, can't see the bumpy patchwork soundproofing under there at all. There it is, all done, and as I said, you can't see the lumpiness of the, uh, the sound deadening. It really does flatten it off nicely. I've managed to make the rubber sit nicely in the carpet, finishes it off very good, and if we go around the inside, the whole pillar is very nice. That inner corner, it is quite far in, it is quite a push, you have to stretch it quite a long way, but it does go. Now we need to do the other wheel tub, I'm going to have a minute, check it out. I'm going to make sure this other panel that I just copied from one side to the other, even though the tub's a different size fits. Uh, yeah, happy with that. All tucked and cut around the seat belt. Very nice. Any overhang goes under the old carpet. We've left some overhanging a bit here, there and everywhere. Uh, and that way it's another little layer of protection when we put the boards on. One of my cuts did get a bit close, but uh, yeah, still plenty on there.
It is the following day. Weather is slightly better. I say that. It's been really windy. We've been locked inside the workshop. Not the best of lighting. Dark footage makes for grainy videos. We don't like that. We're halfway outside. Let's have a little look because I am finished with the trimming around the pillars. We've done the wheel tubs and we've done the rear posts all in one. They are looking nice. You can ever so slightly just see my join there and there is a join there. If you're being really picky, you might not like it, but I'm happy with it. Done the little cover thing, the little plastic trim. I was going to paint it black, and then I thought I might as well just uh, carpet it. We've got the carpet. Done both sides. We've done all around. You can just about see the impressions. Not too worried about that. We're really happy. We have done all the way around, and on the edge of the door, I just cut it. I could possibly get it under that rubber, there's no lip. I'm not too bothered about that, it looks really nice. Standing at the back, I have done both rear doors. They are full up with Dodo insulation, bit of 5mm padding where I could get it in. Then we've got some vapour barrier. I have done the sliding door. All filled up with insulation, it's been sealed off and we are going to put one sheet of wood all the way over it. Makes it a bit tricky, but uh, get creative and I'm sure you'll work it out. While I was there, I did notice plenty of big holes behind the, uh, the B post. So I have just put some five mil sticky back over all the holes, quieting down some noise, quieting down some draft. Didn't take too long, but uh, it is what it is, right? Had the sliding door trim up, put some dodo sound matting under there. Um, yeah, just a few bits of insulation should quieten it down nicely. With these open pockets, if you've got a caddy, you'll know that there's open pockets. And uh, I plan to put a piece of thin plywood all the way along there, and I will bolt it in to the bolt holes that you would bolt the bulkhead on. And then up here, I'm gonna build some little boxes and put some speakers in them. Don't want speakers in the rear panel, so I'm gonna make some little carpeted boxes that go there nicely on both sides. With the driver's side rear panel, as we know, when you've got a caddy floor, that goes all the way along so i'm probably just going to chop that off along there and make some nice boxing to go around it used 95 percent of the dodo sound insulation about eight sheets of the dodo matting i've used all the five mil sticky back stuff and uh yeah most of that roll that's been going for like three projects i have mentioned that they were the old panels i've cut them down there's a few chips in them they're slightly warped out of shape so i'm going to get some fresh board in but they are ready to be traced round, templated up, cut out on new ones, and then carpeted. And that is the final piece of getting it trimmed out. We're back at it again. It's the following day. Might even be two days later. It's hard to keep track of the days since Christmas and New Year and all that palaver. Anyway, picked up two fresh sheets. Oh uh, yeah, 18 quid a sheet, five mil exterior ply. Good stuff. The original stuff is a bit like cardboard. And as you can see, mine was a bit poorly. Not only was there bits missing, but it was all out of shape. Didn't look pretty at all. But a bonus that it was in there because I can trace round it, cut it out and make it perfect. On mine, I did leave those corners on. I didn't cut those out. We left those in and uh, yeah, pretty. Anyway, there's the wood on the floor, all nicely cut. I laid it down and I traced round it. When doing your cutting, take a bit of time doing it. What I'd done was trace it out, marked all the holes out, Use the jigsaw and yeah, it's come out nice. To get a nice clean cut without chipping the edge of the wood, what I do, I put a bit of masking tape over the line, the cut line, comes out really nice. That way you won't be chipping all the edge of the wood off. And then when you're peeling the tape off, peel the tape away from the fresh cut edge. Because even if you peel the tape off the wrong way, you can end up pulling the top layer of the plywood off. So take your time doing that. And then with cutting, I spent maybe 20 minutes just on this roof panel. Nice and slow, haven't got the jigsaw going fast. They're not straight edges on none of these, so I couldn't use a skill saw, so jigsaw only. I took my time, it's come out nice. Then with drilling the holes, the old panel had 14 mil holes, but I only had a 16 mil bit. So I've ground the edges of my 16 mil bit down to a 14. I've got a bit of wood underneath the plywood and that stops the bottom layer from splitting because if you don't do that, you're going to end up splitting the bottom layer and it's not going to look pretty. Then when you're done, your holes will look pretty like that. There was loads of fixings on the old panel and you didn't need that many. So I've done one, missed one, done one, missed one. 
I did draw all the holes out just in case it does start to hang down. I can put a few more trim clips in it. And I do plan to use trim clips on this. I've got some 10mm fir tree clips with a 19mm head and I'm just going to use those to put the roof in place. When it comes to the side panels, I've got another little trick so you don't see any of the fixing. It's about 10 o'clock at night, but I want to get this one covered and in. I've tried it in and out a few times before carpeting it. We've got the carpet, we've had a little spruce up. I'm going to lay out some of that foil because I don't want to get my fresh carpet dirty on the floor. Let's roll a time lapse. Some might be today and some tomorrow, but let's get these panels all cut, carpeted and fitted and done. Oh yeah. done on all the boards now I have already offered my boards up and worked out where I want the screws to go so I'm going to screw this rather than trim clips and I've worked out where they need to go I've made sure there's plenty of metal behind the panel I've worked out how deep it is to the outside make sure you don't use too long of screws I am using six by three quarter inch they are a posi countersunk screw perfect for this I've got a small drill bit I'm going to locate the hole on the back and we can slowly see the carpet trying to raise up there. That is there. I've got a fresh blade, just double check. And I'm going to cut a very small slip that way. And that way. I should be able peel open a bit of the carpet and that will show me the countersunk hole with the carpet peeled back. Now I've already done one here, I had to get some more glue, ended up being blue spray glue, not overly keen on it but it's fine. We've got a screw in the hole and once you've screwed your screw up, just push the tab back over and now we've got a completely hidden fixing point. If you do need to find them again, you can just run your finger over it and you'll slowly feel a little bump. And there it is. The glue does slightly hold it down and you can just work it around a little bit. Now you can't see any fixtures, any fittings, happy days. Quick demonstration on putting the first board in. As we know, there's our hidden screws. I haven't drilled into the van yet and that is because when you're offering these boards up, you could drill a hole Go to put the board up and you can't find the hole again. Now we don't want loads of holes in the van, so I've left the holes and the screwing and drilling until last. The reason I've done this panel in two pieces is because we've got rear seats and rear seat belts. And can we see, I've cut a little slit in the board for the seat belt to go on. And that will go up there. I've got a small drill bit. And when I say a small drill bit, I've cut the drill bit down so it's shorter because if you've got a full length drill bit and you drill into the inside panel, you always end up pushing hard and you might end up poking the outer panel. We don't want any outies on the outer panel. So I've cut a drill bit down and I've resharpened it. I'm just gonna push that into position where I believe it needs to be. Applying firm pressure made the hole, I'm not moving, I'm getting my six by three quarter inch screw. I'm not gonna use a screw gun because I don't want to strip it. I'm just gonna use a good old fashioned screwdriver. Et voila. One more down there, one at the bottom. It's held in at the top. I haven't got any screws in the corners. It's really stiff board. It's not gonna flex at all. Um, yeah, happy with that. One and two more to drill and screw up, and that is this panel in place. Uh, 
And if I cover that screw up, oh yeah, can't see it at all. Yeah, no more time lapses. Video's dragged on long enough. I'm just gonna smash this out and let's have a look and see what it looks like at the end. It's taken me a little bit longer than I expected to do this, but I've done it. I've done a job as good as I can. I've made it as nice as possible. Plan to keep the van for a long time. You don't wanna wish you'd done a better job. While I get the last of these panels screwed up, about seven to 10 days ago, I did manage to do the front end. All the beige plastics, the gray carpet, I've recovered it, painted the plastics. It looks a lot nicer. So while I do these last panels, have a little look at this. Right, so I've got all the panels stripped out and this is what they look like before. Not very pretty, white plastic, gray carpet, not nice. Finally, we got them in the booth and I've cleaned them. I've truck washed them, I've degreased them, I've red scotch pad them. They're really clean, they're prepped up and ready for paint. Now all we need to do is get some 1K plastic primer. And when I say 1K, no hardener, nothing. We're gonna put two thin coats on, nothing too thick, because if you start putting thick paint on these, they do crack in the sun and look unpretty. We don't wanna fill the grain in, we just want some adhesion. So, let's get some paint out. I mixed up some gray, almost close to the original plastics from the Toran, from the later caddies, and uh, yeah, we put three coats on, nice and thin, looks absolutely pucker, really happy with that, absolute spot on. I did also get a coat on the sun visors, they are looking nice. Yeah, really happy with that, it's come out well. Nice color, not too black, not too faint, matches the original as close as I can get it. Let's move on to covering the headlining because it is definitely past its best. Absolutely hanging, but it's not hanging down. Let's get some carpeting on the go. Got it out. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is the headliner. Because we've done all the plastics, I'm gonna get the front done. That way the cab's all nice and then I can start on the back tomorrow. We're waiting for some more insulation to turn up. I went with the anthracite carpet. Uh, I went for a light gray in my big van. Gonna go for a dark gray in this one. Now, it's not the cheapest of carpet. This was the six meters by two meters. Should be plenty to do the caddy. Um, obviously, you don't wanna waste it. Problem is when doing a headliner, it's a bit of a bold panel. It's dished on the underneath, so you need to cut a bit more rather than not cut enough and then come up short. Don't wanna do that, so I've cut plenty out. The little bits that are left over, you can keep to wrap with something else. Let's get this cut down, laid over, and let's get some glue on it. When putting the glue on there, you do wanna put plenty on there to work it out on how much. I've got a six meter roll of carpet and it's come with six cans. So you would think you would use a can per two by one meter. Now, it does come out stringy. You want the stringiness, you don't want it too close and to have too much overlap, like a bit of a snotty bit. It looks like you just spat on it. Try and lay something behind it because the, the sprays, they do go everywhere and they're quite hard to get off of some things. I've got the old uh, ply lining from the caddy doesn't matter if some gets on that. Um, yeah, just get it on there. The reason I've got it stood up like this, you can have it laid down, but these cans like to be sprayed like that and not like that. Areas where there's a, a, tight, a tight bend or something like that, you can put a few extra layers of glue on. And we're gonna coat this and we're gonna coat the carpet. And as you can see, I'm just overlapping the last pass. Easy as that. I'm probably about eight to 10 inches away with spray glue. You've got to let it go off for about 10 minutes. You don't just want to stick it straight on now. I'm going to let it go off for 10 minutes. It's not propped up very nicely. I could have made something a bit better for the occasion. Not gonna go all the way to the edges because I know I've got some overhang. I am gonna put a little bit more of this in though. Let's let that go off for 10 minutes. I have used maybe 70% of that can already, but it's a headlining. You don't want it drooping. Now, when doing these panels with loads of shaping, it would be nice to have a few pairs of hands, i.e. one person either end holding it and then me working in from the middle. 
but it isn't. It's 9.30 at night. I'm here on my own. We've got to do it. I don't want it to stick to this side just yet, so I've laid some of the wrapping over this. Again, if it was a flat panel, like uh, one of the sideboards, easy. This one's a little bit trickier. Let's lay it out. I'm going to lay it over the top as lightly as possible. A little bit of overhang all the way around it. Very nice. And this bit dips straight in, so I'm going to go straight in for the dip. It's stuck somewhere a little bit, so let's loosen that off. You don't, you want to put a bit of tension on it because you want to pull any creases out, but you don't need to pull it too tight. Just keep working it in to all the creases. This headliner isn't too bad actually. I've seen a lot worse with different shapes in it. Right, so I've got it pretty good. I'm happy, we've got no air bubbles, we've got no overlaps. We've got no crap bits. I am going to leave a little bit overhang to wrap on the back of the panel. So I'm going to flip it over and just cut around it. So I've gone round, we've overlapped our 15, 20 mil bead all the way round. I've cut it out. I've cut all the holes out with a sharp blade. I've just got the big hole left. How does that sit? Something like that. Oh yeah. Right, we're finally all done. It's taken me a bit longer than expected, but I wanted to do a nice job. First of all, I had to buy another sheet of wood. Because bits of wood are so cheap at the minute, I had to buy another sheet. We needed to get some bits for the rear doors. They are looking pretty, and I did also cut a piece to fit on the boot floor. We've got a mixture of the vapour barrier, insulation, 5mm board, and then some carpet over the top. Very nice, happy days. Let me just quickly show you these screws that are hidden. Wherever he is, can't even find him. There he is. Oh uh, yeah, as easy as that. And we've got four screws in those door panels. Little trick, I did uh, pick that up from when we done the black T4 transporter all that time ago. We had to strip the panels out and it took me a while to find the screws. Thought I'm using that idea. Anyway, I'm happy. We can slightly see the uh, the bumps in the wheel tubs there. Never mind, is what it is. Happy. The boards are sitting super nice. I need to get a longer bolt for that seat belt. I plan to put a five mil washer in the board so then the seat belt can still pivot. I haven't got a longer bolt, so that's just holding it up for now. Need to order a longer bolt. Whoever sits in that seat belt is gonna have to go bareback. Anyway, roof lining, trim clips looking sweet. Got a few of them dotted around can't see one in this shot oh there's one uh, yeah very nice happy it's come out all right don't do what I did and what I've done was I ordered six meters of carpet and I did do the front roof liner as we've already seen turns out I needed seven meters so I ordered some more carpet yesterday that's turned up today and I've finished off the panels and as we can see in this shot that's the old carpet that's today's carpet check that color difference out that's like night and day right Ordered the same stuff from the same place, but that front panel is newer. Um, only two weeks newer. Maybe the roles changed. I'm going to have to email the company because that colour is like night and day. Um, even if you go at different angles, it's the wrong colour. It's definitely lighter. It's a little tip, guys. Don't do what I've done. And uh, yeah, order enough to start with. Overall, happy with it. Apart from the colour difference that's literally winking at me in the shot. Um, yeah, happy days. Let's have a little look through the sliding door. Sliding door is just one big panel, but it's come out all right. You can see a bit of red paint around the door, but we're not worried about that. Happy, um, yeah, and where it fits up to the front, 
it's looking real nice. I have got to make some end pieces that go both sides and I'm going to put some speakers in there but that will be another episode on the caddy interior because I want to put a small screen up there. I want to put some lights and just make it a bit comfy. I think I'm going to make a little single bed as well. Um, but yeah, overall, really happy. Plastics in the front are nice. They almost match the dash. The dash is original colour. So are the door cards. And then the A-post are the ones I painted. And they do look pretty close. So yeah, we're happy with that. I've used it for about two weeks and we haven't scratched. If we lift that up... You can still see it's white under there and the paint stays on there and that is because i put a bit of hardener in with my paint it's made it a bit more elasticity um yeah happy days finally got it done slightly disappointed with the color of today's bit of carpet but i will email the company worst case i'm gonna have to rip it off that board and do it again anyway make sure you don't make the same mistake i did get enough before you start you need seven meters by, it comes in two meter rolls, seven by two if you plan on doing a headliner at the front. That's for a caddy. If you've got a bigger van, it's gonna be bigger. I will put a link to everything I've used in the description. There will be another video on the inside of the caddy. I wanna put a screen up, I wanna put some speakers, some LED. This video is dragged out long enough, so I do apologize. You know I like to get as much info in a video so you guys at home can do it yourself. Anyway, if you found the video useful, click the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out.